All right, what's up with the written communication in BEC? It's 15% of the test, right? But are we accountants or are we writers? What do we need to know about writing? Well, the good news is long before we ever learned what a debit and credit was, we started writing. First grade, we had that dotted line paper. Eventually, we learned nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, even prepositional phrases. Then, as a young CPA, I found myself writing more letters on behalf of clients to IRS, to the state or local tax department. Maybe even they got a payroll tax notice that I had to answer. So the CPA exam knew early on that writing was important for an entry-level CPA. And not long ago, all four CPA exams had written communication. But eventually the AICPA thought that was too easy and wound up pushing people over the top and they passed exams when maybe they didn't really know the material, but because of the writing, they did so well. So what they did was they still wanted an entry-level CPA to be able to communicate with good writing skills, but they decided to just have writing in one of the four exams. So some candidates love it. They say it's writing. It should be easy points. And others say, hey, I got into accounting because I didn't want to be a writer. I'm good with analytics. I'm not trying to get a job with Hallmark. So the good news is most I-75ers do very well in the written communication section of BEC, but I understand that some are still afraid of it. So some things to remember, the written communication is machine graded. It's not human graded. It used to be human graded. And back then, the grader would get a huge stack of papers and would read them quickly, very quickly, and make three piles out of them. Pile one was for those who did extremely well. And it would be very easy for the grader to come back to that pile and give everybody pretty much full credit, 10 points. Pile two was for those who had no clue. They just didn't follow directions at all, didn't write anything. They would go in pile two, and it would take no time later for the grader to go back and give that person zero. Pile three was for everybody else. And you could imagine pile three was very large and took the graders much time and judgment to determine how many points to award. And as for these graders, they were CPAs, but they were paid $50 per day to grade these exams. So the AICPA realized we're going to have a hard time getting these people to want to grade this exam. So they moved toward the machine graded writing assignment. And today the written communication on BEC is 100% machine graded, no more human judgment. So we're talking spelling, punctuation, grammar, and then it's all about keywords. And where do we find the keywords? Pretty much from the facts and the instructions. So the instructions might say something like this. Hook and Slice is a startup company that manufactures golf clubs. The owner of the company is upset because Hook and Slice has reported losses for the last three quarters despite increased production and the acquisition of new customers. The owner is worried about his ability to obtain additional financing. In reviewing the operating performance of Hook and Slice, you notice that the company's income statement has been prepared using variable costing. You know that although the company is not required to use GAAP, the absorption costing method may be a better method for Hook and Slice to use for financial reporting purposes. As the senior accountant, draft a memo to the owner explaining the differences between variable and absorption costing and how a change in methodology could impact the company's profitability. So our memo needs to be in the right format. To owner of Hook and Slice, from the senior accountant, subject, variable and absorption costing. Dear owner, I received your inquiry regarding the variable and absorption costing methods. I'm pleased to present you the following summary to explain the similarities and differences between these two costing methods and how they impact operating income. So we're getting our key words in there like operating income, variable and absorption costing. The similarities and differences between the variable and absorption costing methods can be explained by how different costs are treated under the two methods. Under both the variable and absorption costing methods, direct materials, direct labor, and variable overhead are treated as inventory costs, and both fixed and variable selling and administrative expenses are treated as period costs. So more keywords, period costs, inventoriable or product costs. Then we go on. The differences lie in how fixed manufacturing overhead is treated under the variable and absorption costing methods. So that's another key word, fixed manufacturing overhead. 
and how it's treated under the variable and absorption costing methods. These differences, which are timing differences, result in different levels of operating income. This is because fixed manufacturing overhead is recognized as expense in the period incurred under the variable costing method, but is treated as inventoriable cost under the absorption costing method. Therefore, when production exceeds sales, ending inventory under absorption costing is higher because ending inventory absorbs the fixed overhead cost incurred during the period and does not expense it until the product is sold. Since ending inventory is higher under absorption costing, operating income is higher also, since cost of goods sold would be lower. I hope this clears your question about the variable and absorption costing methods and how they impact operating income. If you have any further questions, please reach out to me. And then we would close out. So that's how to practice for BEC written communication. Compare and contrast. Take two related BEC topics, like we did, variable and full absorption costing, write a memo comparing and contrasting them. Other topics that would be good for this? Operating leverage and financial leverage. Compare and contrast them. Product costs versus period costs. Traditional overhead versus activity-based costing. Job order costing versus process costing. How many of these can you think of? Practice comparing and contrasting as many of these as you can think of because not only will it help you learn the writing skills, but it'll also get you that much more familiar with the topics so that if it doesn't appear in writing, but it appears in multiple choice, you may have just written something that's going to help you answer the multiple choice question. So let's review. It's machine graded, spelling, punctuation, grammar, and then it's all about the keywords and you get the keywords right from the facts of the question.